Hi, I'm, I'm Ms. Stanberry, Ernestine Stanberry. I am uh, director of the International Pro-Life Federation. I'm also a member of CFABC. Today I'm on uh, in session where usually uh, there is uh, Mr. James Manning and Jason Johnson. Today we're going to bring in Mr. William Birch. And William Birch uh, wrote the African American Employment Act Bill, HB 4683. So uh, we're going to have a, a really good show today. And uh, hold up for a minute. Let's see. Mm. Ah, <laughs> love that. Mm. Mm. Ah, that feels good. You know, they always bring it in on Channel 2. You know, they bring in, you know, this is my grandson and <laughs> at Christmas. Mm. Excuse me. And uh, <clears throat> this is a little toy here. <laughs> oh, and this is a cell phone. Henry Sampson, he invented the cell phone. H A, I mean H E N R Y S A M P S O N, black inventor of the cell phone. Now, isn't it amazing how he invented the cell phone company? And how many big businesses do we have here in America? No black owned, operated business on that cell phone. There's no black owned uh, cell phone company. I know that there should be. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think um, when you talk about black cell phone companies, are you talking about the manufacturers of cell phones or are you talking about like the service of cell phones? Because if you're talking about the services of, of cell phones, then you know, it's no major ones because AT&T, Verizon, but if you look at the smaller, if you go down up and down Cottage Grove and um, and 79th Street or 63rd Street, you can find people that have the little small shops the, that have the services for cell phone services. Are they usually black and owned and operated? Yeah. Well, I, I, a few of them are <coughs> black owned and operated, you know, the, the, the ABC, and et cetera, those yeah. type of companies. I'm not saying ABC right. in particular, but those type of small, um, you know, mom and pop type mobile, you know, phone stores. Right, but I guess when we talk about black owned, and I think this is always the conversation of like trying to expand uh, black economic development, mm -hmm. you know, getting uh, African Americans to be more entrepreneurial. I think we I, always- Wait just a minute, hold on. See, you know, see, I, I don't know, I have a, a mentality of uh, since we owned it, we should have it. And uh, they give you, they always give you psychology on uh, production and economy. They they give you psychology, but you see, just like if you own if you own the cell phone, all of it should be yours. Uh, the FCC bit of it, uh, the ownership of it, the rights of it, the marketing of it. If he invented the cell phone, there's no logic to say, well, okay, well. Why am I gonna let somebody just have it? And and uh, well, and uh, you may you know, not uh, have it. I mean, like, why 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 are, you, I, I, why are not black people rich? Uh, well, with how do phone? you how do you? It's just like this. It's like uh, I can inv I can invent um, something, but I may sell off the rice because I may not have right. the capacity to That's grow you know. <coughs> that <coughs> type of company. So so you sell off the rice. How could you sell off the rice if you invent something? You well, you sell patent. you sell the patent. You sell the patent. Oh, see there. And you know what? Now this is the problem. Uh, global global patents that never have worked. See when you and uh, oh no they don't. But because uh, China so you, you sell, can send them you over sell, to China you, and they'll you, they'll you, bootleg it. You, you, sell, you sell you sell yourself when you have this. Uh, if, if you invented something, you sell your rights to it because you don't have the capacity to, to invent it. Uh, and so uh, that's no logic to me. Right. I, it's no log a logic for well, acceptance I, I when I'm an Encobra member. And I, why, why should uh, I not have big business on the cell phone? The thing is, when, when a company, uh, when a person sells the rights, because I have an aunt who's inventing something right now, mm -hmm. and what you do is you sell the patent because you don't have the capacity to produce it, to manufacture it, and market it. So you sell the patent to a company that's able to do that, and then they pay you royalties off of each unit sold. So mm -hmm. that, that that's probably the situation with the cell phone. Yeah. I, well, I, well, even when they're selling you the royalties, you should still have uh, 
uh, that see, you, see the phone still got to work when you have the. That's why they got his name there, S A M P. But they just took the P out, and it's, uh, it's S A M Samsung, because it's still it's still yours. You see, I mean, you might sell your rights, but it's working because it's Samsung. So you can't really say that you you're not supposed to have. Uh, see, see, uh, I'm not trying to analyze backwards. I'm saying that black men and black people ought to have black big business. That's well, all that's, and, uh, you can, we, I, I think we all agree on that. I think it's just that you have to, you have to build them. And I think it's just, it's the same thing it, when people argue, even now they say, you know what, why is, why are they sending jobs to China and Indonesia and everything like that? And it, it's like, no, nah, I would agree. It's like these things should be um, built, cars and, I mean, furniture, clothing. Mm -hmm. All of our clothes come from overseas. Why isn't it built here in, in the United States? Well, you, you can if you can manufacture it and produce it and market and sell it at a cost that people will pay for it. You know, people love to go to Walmart. They love to go to Target. And then they'll say, let's buy American. But then if I say, well, you know what? Do you want me to pay American wages? Do you want me to pay American health care? If you want me to do that, then pay $20 for this T-shirt. But you say, no, I want to pay $7.99 for the T-shirt. I think that's where the issue is. And as far as like for black people, I mean, we live in a capitalist society. So you can't say that a black person invented so black people should have it because you no, have to buy and sell. Yeah, no, hold is, on, hold, hold up on that logic. Is, <laughs> uh, no, see, how, uh, you have to hold up on that logic. Uh, black people should have it because they did it. You know, they, I, don't, I don't give them logic on you shouldn't have it because you should have it. If you did it, you did it, and it's yours. Well, Mrs. Sansbury, Stansbury, I got a question. How can black people, how can we get involved in big business and how can we develop businesses? I'm an aspiring entrepreneur, James is as well. How do you think you know, African Americans can get involved in business and how can they help their businesses well, grow? Well, well, Evans was talking about uh, if they started buying black, okay, if they started buying black, even, even if it is, uh, uh, see, you keep your money in your community by buying black, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, you, you, you take your dollars outside uh, of the, your communities. When you keep your money inside, your, 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 it's best to go out and buy black. I don't, I don't believe in all that Walmart but, stuff. But, but the thing is, the, the, big, the big thing is when you say that, that's a good point, buy black. But when we look at our communities, we don't have anything that we tangibly own. When we talk about the, the ABC cellular but see that cellular stores, but when did that start, though? That well, logic I mean, used to it, be that. It, stop, it stopped in like the late 70s, early 80s when we, we stopped owning things in our communities. Things yeah, started well, getting well, transitioned well, well. out and people mm -hmm. started moving in and began to begin, begin being the economic providers and we began, began becoming the consumers. And it's, you know, right now the day is, is worse because you start seeing uh, other ethnic groups just move into communities overnight and open up and we again are the biggest consumer. They come to our communities because there's opportunity in our communities. They don't come from these other suburbs early in the morning to open up these stores because they don't have nothing else to do. They come because we have a vast amount of income in our communities and they come to take that money out of our communities mm -hmm. and take it back to their community. What we need to begin to do is what you're talking about it's creating the black businesses so we can begin to go and shop at those businesses, patronize those businesses, and create that closed economy that, we, that, you, that you're talking about. The closed economy that circulates the dollar, not just the black dollar, but the dollar in that community. The Hispanic dollar, the black dollar, the Asian dollar, all those dollars should stay in individual communities so that you can be able to you know, build the capacity of that community uh, uh, as far as infrastructure, housing, programming, things of that sort. Then you begin to answer all of the questions uh, and all of the problems that are the root, you know, of, of your community by the economics that you create. Hmm. You know, you, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> you said a mouthful, really. <laughs> you, you're running for alderman of the, uh, <laughs> 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 you're running for, oh, you're running for alderman uh, of the future. Are you sure you're running <laughs> for <laughs> Jess alderman? <laughs> right, yeah, I, I would, I would put, and see, I, I like what Will just said because I, I think part of the thing that we can look at is not only economic development but diversifying mm -hmm. that economic development. We need to, you know, the jobs that, because we're consumers, so we open up shops and, and 
still the clothes you buy mm -hmm. out of the shop, mm -hmm. the money may the money may circulate in there, but those clothes still came from um, overseas. They were made overseas. They were shipped in different know, let companies. Let me tell you now. And I think you, that's what we have to do is can we bring here's manufacturing what here's, back to But you know what? Here's what I'm beginning to see. I'm, even on my oldest son has a machine. Uh, a lot of people are sewing and getting small little sewing areas where they're making these clothes themselves now, you know? He, and I can, he, he's got a, 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 a thing called Knits and Knots. And it's going to be like upscale ties and they're handmade. They're handmade uh, bow ties and long ties. And uh, he's bringing back the mascot, you know. Mm -hmm. And he's, 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 making his own, he's, making his own, he's making his own designer stuff and working and going on. Well, that's, that, and that's the thing. So when you do something like that, I think if it's something niche like that, I think people will expect to pay more because right. of the quality. But when you look at the economics reality of the people, of the actual consumer, okay. to to say that we want to build something and manufacture it and then sell it in one homogeneous community and still have it at a price that black people who are well, see, chapped if, if, financially if black, chapped. If black people's if well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me talk about what James just said mm -hmm. because I'm going to tell you something that, that we don't talk about. We, when we have places like the Collection, the LARC coming to our community, and we know that they don't pay top dollar for those clothing, sure but no. our people come in those stores and they pay no less than $75, $60 for a shirt or, 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 or uh, 75 to $150 for a pair of jeans. And w what she was saying about paying a little extra money because someone spent time to, to, to manufacture their stuff by themselves, we'll argue with our own people you know, as far as spending that kind of money. We'll haggle a person yes. down mm -hmm. on, on, on the price, but we'll go into these other stores and we'll go in and there and with no them. problem and, pay and we price. know But that you know what, things. it's just like what I, you know what, 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 just like what's happening in Brownsville. See, have the concept that you, uh, you don't have to go to be, uh, uh, I like Brownsville, and you don't have to go uh, north to uh, have class. See, you, you, you can have, you can do the same, uh, Citate things outside, and you can you can create the area. You can create your own environment area right in your own. Now, for instance, Yasa Yasa African Restaurant. Mm -hmm. You see how they created mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. They created that whole thing right there, and it's it's regal. You don't have to say I gotta be here regal. Right. You can be regal where you're at. Matter of fact, you can be like I feel regal not right now because see, I'm gonna always say that if I did it. <laughs> It's mine. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I, I, I think that's the thing. And I think what you're saying is just like having areas, like if you look at the north side and, mm -hmm. and you go to Old Town, Bucktown, um, Lakeview, you see these entire areas where there's the shops, there's the restaurants. And I think the thing is, is that you can create that on the south side because I drive, I'm down 63rd Street a mm -hmm. lot and mm -hmm. I see there are a lot of stores there. The thing is, there are a lot of the same stores, right? Mm -hmm. And, and you, you know, that's you, you, what we just, have just to like try to at, at just like at uh, uh, you can go down seventy nine. You you would think now Yasa is a class restaurant, and and the, they are um, right there. See, you can go outside, and people have a a mindset of seventy ninth Street. You can go inside right. and have a. It's like you walk in into another, experience. and and yeah. see the point mm -hmm. is the people on the outside. They're not really uh, bothering anybody, and they're not. Re they, they're keeping their doors open and going inside. And that's strange how it's the culture. It's, it's, it's your culture that makes uh, the 79th Street area like this, and then uh, Yasa, you write in a, an environment like that, just mm -hmm. like that. A lot that, of that goes know? on in Bronzeville, too, when you talk about the strip yeah. going down 43rd right. Street and right. going up Cottage Grove. You have some really nice businesses there, boutiques. Bronzeville yeah, Coffee House, right. you know, Central Steps, the shoe store, right. agriculture. You have some really nice upscale boutiques, but you know, if you go out yeah. in the community, there still is, you know, people out and about drinking, etc. Right. But the thing is, as you bring in more business and you bring in more income, you know, uh, eventually the neighborhood around we'll these change. businesses and everything will change. The schools will change and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that there's not enough, you know, money being generated in the community and staying in the community. Right. And, 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 and to follow what he's saying, 
if you think about um, over the, let's just say over the last 10 years, okay? Over the last 10 years, there, I mean, everyone has had an econ economic development platform for their, their, their community, their race, and things of that sort. African Americans in the city of Chicago have not cohesively put together an economic development platform to kind of sustain our communities. We haven't done, we, ha we haven't addressed the, the lack of uh, job opportunities and hiring in our communities. We haven't addressed the lack of food deserts in our communities. Uh, we, we've continued to let outside entities come into our communities and capitalize off of our dollar. And so, you know, that has to be addressed. That has to be addressed, you know, holistically from the community level all, all the way to, you know, the, the top of the political food chain. Mm -hmm. yeah, because there has to be an economic uh, development platform or plan to revitalize our communities. Let me ask you guys something, because I was reading this, um, this report and they were talking about developing countries. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking that maybe if we looked at these blighted African American communities as uh, developing countries and use that same process on how they go in and, and they develop new countries, and, uh, de these third world countries, and they try to bring economic development to them. I think that same process can happen because we're talking about resources. now. If you're circulating, if everyone in the community makes five dollars an hour, and you say we circulate those five dollars an hour, that's you're going to you're going to end up with five dollars an, an, an hour. But if you can start to say, well, we can bring these businesses and we can have this economic activity, but we also want to attract. I want to be able to attract some people from the north side, from, from the west side, from the south suburbs to come here and shop as well to bring their money. In. And I think that's the part that we miss. We say let's black shop, uh, have people shop black. But then it's like, well, why don't we also think about attracting some of those white dollars, some well, of those? So let me let, let me let me let me challenge let me challenge you on that. We we we've seen the success of uh, Chinatown right. over the years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have they done anything to attract us into their community? No, no, that's because right. <laughs> they they sustain their community off their own dollars. Well, well Chinatown is a is is that it's the novelty of Chinatown. Okay, though. Pilsen. That, Wait, let's just go into Pilsen, Pil Little Village. Mm -hmm. well, you know, let's. Okay. Okay. Just you know? Know? There are Overrides. things there. There are huh. things there that they, but there are things that attract other people to go there. So it may be a restaurant, a particular restaurant that I like over in West Loop, and then while I'm there. I see something else. It's like I might check that out one day, and I might. I think we do the same thing. It's just like, what can we do to attract someone to di these different areas, and then have other options available? Where they make the point. I think James, in a sense, I mean, technically, that's already happening. Technically, our uh, other, you know, different types of races are coming in already, and you know. The doing things and business. doing things, but they're, they're not, not shopping. But the thing is, it, it, you're talking about the quality of the shopping and the type of the shopping. But as far as bringing other people, people are already coming in. Right. <laughs> right. No, <laughs> and then I'm gonna use an example. Let, right. let me I'm use an example of this. Okay. Because we are the only race that actually uh, patronizes other food, ethnic food backgrounds. When we open a soul food restaurant, you don't see Chinese people coming into our restaurant eating eating soul food. You don't see Hispanics coming to the the soul food restaurant ordering greens and cornbread. But you don't have to open the soul food No, no, well, I'm using an example because right. what you're saying is, like, when I said Pilsen, you said, you know, well, they have eateries that we come and patronize. We always patronize somebody else, but they don't patronize us. But isn't that, uh, I, 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 what I'm saying is, is that we don't have, okay, if, let's say Dixie Kitchen. Now, I go to Dixie Kitchen, everyone is in there. Creole, you can, you get a Creole restaurant, Everyone, everyone loves, no matter what their race is. So you don't have to open. Dixie Kitchen is not real soul food. It's not soul. Food. <laughs> it's not even. It's but not even Creole. I, 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 it's, 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 it's like wish, TGI wish. Friday Creole. Yeah, exactly. It, it's not. <laughs> it's not. I know it's, it's a pseudo Creole, but yeah, I get that. Very pseudo. But I, I'm just saying, <laughs> it's just like okay, so it's faux Creole. And we don't want to diss Dixie Kitchen because I love you guys. They're great. So. No, I love them. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love you guys. Them, but but <laughs> it, it's not it's not true. It's not like New Orleans. But what I'm saying is is that if if you that's why I always say the diversity of of what we offer is what you can start to do to attract other people in. And then and I re remember I was thinking about the idea as far as like creating zones where you do 
uh, have the opportunity where the city can say we give rebates to different businesses if you're in this precinct. And so if you shop in this precinct, we can now lower prices. I mean, I think the thing is we can do different things to create economic activity, but it's diversity. But the thing is, James, you got to recognize also the, 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 the consumer. You know, everything is market analysis. And, when, and trust me, you know, the land is cheaper in more of these, you know, less developed neighborhoods. If Chipotle thought they could make money out there, they would. <laughs> Chipotle <laughs> can make money. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, the, the, the disposable so income. So you're not going to bring those type of businesses into that community because they don't see any, you know, way to make the, money the there. And see, that's what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is if you start to diversify the amount of economic activity that works, then you start to bring in, and I think it's still the housing and everything else comes into play because okay, what's, 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 you what's need the, more. What's the, uh, what is the, the concept of the, what is that restaurant? You said Chipotle. Mm -hmm. Uh, see, I went in there and ate that. I said, well, okay, now. It's what is, kind see, of Mexican. See, organic it's, Mexican. Food. Yeah, it's organic. And it's, Mexican. It's, I want this name yeah. to have the sound. That's mm -hmm. all it is. I want the name. Just like, for instance, uh, you say doo-doo. I use doo-doo Olsen soap. Doo-doo Olsen soap is straight from Nigeria, black. It's got all the herbs and everything in it. So you have a concept of, uh, it comes in a green, it's got a green box. It got the fruit and everything. You know, so it's called Doo-doo Olsen. I think the doodle would probably uh, turn people off. No, well, see, you know what? Uh, see, the point is, that, see, that's the concept. What, see, see, why would your mind be turned off when you say doodle? -doo? Doodle -doo also. <laughs> because well, it's doodle. -doo. Well, yeah, well, doo -doo well, well, we doodle. -doo, I don't so want to wash up with doodle. -doo. I know. Well, here's I what I'm trying doo -doo. to say. I'm saying, see, I see, see that, see, see, see how that. Now, see, I don't think on doodle also like that. If you're from Nigeria or if you deal with Nigerians, you don't think of the word doodle. -doo. You think of Fruit and, and stuff, so mm -hmm. it's like uh, it's it's a cultural mindset. It's, 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 it's nothing. Mindset. It's nothing nasty. Or, matter of fact, it's nothing stinky or nasty. Or even if you stink or nasty, you you be blank, you be thankful you you're stinking and nasty. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you're, you're thankful you're living. That's all I'm saying right. about skin. I, I, I see but it's, it's but I, don't, I don't I don't I don't I don't get. I it. think it's, it's it's okay enough. I say I say I got to say that. See, so you say doo doo, or you can say doo 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 also doo doo also doo doo also doo doo also. You said doo-doo also? Well, it sounds culture. Yeah, it's, it's a culture thing. I use it and I love it. Like Target I only versus use Tarjay. Doo -doo Tarjay. I only, yeah. and look, look, look oh, and on top Tarjay. of it. <laughs> never heard that. I went into Target Tarjay. They call Target Tarjay. Well, look, I went into, I went into a bath, and, yeah, a bath yeah. and body. And she said, I'm, I'm trying to get the real, the real Nigerian soap. It's a Dilo. He, I said, well, maybe they want you to bring you the real Nigerian soap. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I just, uh, and I get what everyone's saying, and I think, it's just there's there's this thinking that I, I think of a paradigm shift that black people have to do and say that we you, you live in this global economic environment and so to to so to think that a 1960s economic platform is going to work in in this um, era I don't think it will. I think it's still. I, it's <laughs> I think it's still in small working. pockets you can, but it can't is, be an economic plan. James, you got to look at this. The history repeats itself, man. Yeah, We're at a time it. right now where we have to come up with some, some real uh, unorthodox, back-in-the-day mm -hmm. ways to address the situations of the plights of our community. Mm -hmm. and, and right now, with, with, the, with the crime, the homelessness, the joblessness, I mean, we got to go back to the 60s, man, because what they did back then worked. Maybe not everything they did work, but right. some of the key principles that they operate under, some of the key but things that they did. Well, they you know worked, what? You know, we should we should definitely figure G, out a way. They, remember, they had G. If I go back to my old neighborhood, in my old neighborhood, what was around there was corn products, uh, Reynolds Wrap, General Electric had a uh, electric oh, motor yeah. plant, and we had all these different plants. So all the guys who would, you know, they would graduate high school, they would go work in those plants, and they were buying cars, buying houses. And I grew up in that neighborhood, and it was a middle class working, it wasn't even middle class, working class neighborhood. Okay, Reynolds is gone. Uh, you uh, know what, uh, just a minute, I, I have uh, five minutes here. Can, can I have uh, Doc's book, please? Um, you know, uh, this is, uh, I'm also, <laughs> excuse me, and I'm, I'm sorry to oh, interrupt you, but... Uh, uh, see the main thing that we, however we conclude and focus, we, we still got to stay uh, focused. I mean, maybe maybe somebody will, will will comprehend what I'm saying about the cell phone. Now, Doc yeah, is uh, running plan. for uh, he's running for well he's running for uh, mayor, and uh, 
you know. But Mr. Last words, Mr. Uh, uh, Bur Birch, you know, for the Alderman 15 board Alderman. Well, I think I think that we've just had a spirited conversation. And yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really want to pass it to, to James to finish mm -hmm. his thoughts about, mm -hmm. you know. I just want to introduce the cell phone because somebody will comprehend what I'm saying. Ooh, don't let me turn it upside down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I, I just saying that, you know, in the short of it, that mm -hmm. we just need to rethink. It's just like those places that those guys were getting jobs, they're no longer there and they're not going to come back. And so those job opportunities are not there. So we have to think differently about how do you create jobs and bring okay. them to the community because nothing else is going to change it. You can shop and all you want to at mom and pop shops in the in the community, but until you bring these different wait, jobs, wait. Wait, wait, before I don't know we go, what we can do. Can we not use those same strategies to address the, gl the global solar energy you know, green economy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can we can. not use that same Localize. platform yeah. to do that? Localize. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. Localize. <laughs> development. I well, think that's know, the sustainability is, 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 is the key. Is, I think this exactly. has been really a good. This has been really a good, uh, this really been a good st uh, thought pattern here. Uh, uh, you know, it gives me um, uh, some logic on uh, what what we can do. And the main thing we can say, focus on how we can do something, is that when you when you think of a man who invented the cell phone. <laughs> Just think of Henry, 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 Henry Sampson, S-A-M-P-S-O-N-G, but he was a black man, invented the cell phone. I had to introduce Henry Sampson. Somebody comprehend. <laughs>